to one is going to be a humor attached to it and you can have a one to one interaction with him so i open the session to dr nitin all your sir thank you Okay, so we are going to finish by four o'clock, approximately. If you get bored earlier, we'll finish earlier. If you want to go longer, we can do that also. So, just few questions before we start. Which version of Office do you use? Now, you may have a counter question. How do I find out which version of Office do I use? Correct. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, that's Windows version. Office ka version alag hota hai, but ठीक है. Now I am going to show you the latest version of Office. You may not have the latest version, but if you feel what I am showing you is important, worth it for your day-to-day -day work, then you should get the latest version. I am not from Microsoft. I am not here to sell anything. So, like he mentioned, by the way, I am recording this session. What does that mean? Everything which I am going to show and whatever happens on the screen is going to get recorded. and i'll upload the video you can download it and share it with your colleagues now this session is going to go on for 2 hours you are here which is very nice after after a while you may feel oh my colleague who is sitting in some opd or some ot should also have attended this please call them even if someone attends 10 minutes of the session they'll benefit from it so let people come and go that's not a problem so before we go ahead let's look at something he said i have done sessions for so many people now i want to show you which countries have done sessions and how many people have trained how would you visualize that there would be a table which shows one column country and another column some numbers correct is that boring or exciting boring boring very good so whenever i'm sure you have attended thousands of presentations by now am i right yes. and delivered also a lot of them so what is the let fill in the blanks okay one word not a technical word not a medical word boring very nice <laughs> can we have a unanimous acceptance of this yes. no some presentations may be interesting but it's a very small percentage that's the 1% i'm talking about we know this but when we are creating the next presentation ourselves do we make any attempt to be in that 1% or do we end up being in the 99% attempt is there but do we end up there not not very, not very often because it takes lot of effort to refine the slides and you don't have that much time correct so 1% is our aim but how to reach that objective is what i'm going to show you among other things so just to give an example of how to make things more interesting i'm going to show you how i did sessions for various people in the world but i don't want to show it to you as an excel file so this is how i'm going to show you it shows countries the bubble size shows approximately number of people then it zooms turns flies to other continent shows the numbers is that nice do you have data which can be represented like this geographically and it will have better impact than seeing it in alphabetical order or descending order of the number that kind of data i mean something like that anything which is geography associated with it i'll show you how to do this this is possible in excel no special software is required how many of you use excel everyone how many of you knew this two very nice so now at the end of the session everyone will know it So let's start with something very disturbing. Like I said, I have done sessions for so many people. Fine, they learn from me, but I also learn from them because I see how people use these products. It's not only medical professionals. In fact, I do very little work with medical profession. What is the conclusion? Again, fill in the blanks. 
everyone uses office which version doesn't matter so every action we perform using office is fill in the blanks <coughs> one word come on if it's required to be repetitive the you have no choice it's a depressing word it's inefficient inefficient means what i am getting the work done but i am not using the best method to do it now when it comes to medicine we are trying to optimize every process right we want to minimize wastage improve operational excellence maximize quality minimize errors all that happens in your core profession when it comes to office nobody cares now all of you learn it people here if i show you an offensive statement like this are you going to take it lying down or you need proof you need proof or not no you are already convinced <laughs> okay so i can give you proof in any product because everything is underutilized so tell me which product do you use most commonly excel word powerpoint outlook there's one more thing i don't know if you use that's called one drive so which topic should i choose to show your inefficiency okay all of them fine <laughs> okay let's start with powerpoint because someone said powerpoint first let's do something very simple what everyone does may be different their topics are different their objectives are different but we do have various things put on our screen for example i have one triangle then i have one square and then i have one circle is this a circle so how do you make a perfect circle by trial and error correct thoda idhar hilayega thoda udhar hilayega kabhi to bolega ha abhi circle mere tarah mere hisab se circle ho gaya it's approximate circle it is humanly impossible to draw a perfect circle without any guidance correct everyone knows that so everyone circle is a little imperfect is it okay or not okay because everyone is like that understand anyway i'll tell you how to do a perfect circle press shift key and draw a circle don't do it like this and you click on that thing called circle now you are about to draw it don't draw press shift key and then draw it is always a perfect circle if you drag never mind it will drag as big as you want but it will always be a perfect circle if you press shift key it is impossible to draw a non circle perfect is it but that's not what i'm showing you i have three things here they are overlapping on top of each other maybe i want to show them one after another using some animation whatever now the problem is after having drawn all three i feel that triangle should have a different color square should have a different color and circle because they mean some three different things from whatever you are trying to show now how will you go to that triangle you have to select it to do any change to it i just want to change the color very simple ambition how will you do that correct yes but because i wanted it perfectly in the center i have taken some effort to put it in the center how do i put things in the center again approximately correct can you find the perfect center by dragging can you find the perfect center so how do you find the perfect center yes you have to very carefully make both zero correct that's little difficult there are better ways of doing it but let's not go there so anyway i have taken the effort of putting it 0 0 now just to go to that thing behind i will have to disturb my alignment what does that mean whenever i finish changing color of that triangle i have to take extra effort to again put all those guys back into center understand yes or no any other method very nice bring to front send to back i'm sure all of you know this yes or no do you use it whenever required now if there are three items bring to front send to back is comparatively easy if there are seven items thode der ke baad you will not understand who is in front who is in back correct you will get completely confused and then you have to redo it so that it is in the correct order so this is how you do it now remember i am not going to give you all solutions that's called spoon feeding 
I'm going to teach you how to learn while you work without anybody giving you a session like this, without going to help file, without going to Google, without reading a book. Understand? While you work, how to become more efficient. So what is our objective right now? Select that triangle. Very simple. Now with that in mind, let's look at the menus available. Have you seen the home tab before? People at the back come in front because I'm going to show you actual software. I'm not showing you a PPT with large fonts. So it will be nicer if you sit in front. So look at all the buttons and think which button can help me. Just eliminate what is obviously relevant. We are not copying, we are not pasting, we are not making it bold, italic, underline. So no, 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 maybe, yes, like that. Process of elimination. We do that all the time while diagnosing things. Same process. So this is zoomed in, so only one half of it is seen. I'll show you the other half of the menu. Why have we come here? To select the triangle. Read all the options, don't jump to conclusions. Udhar likha hai na select, pandra baras se. But you never clicked on select in spite of wanting to select. So now if you click on select, there are three options. Are we selecting all? No, whatever is that select object seems to be already selected. So by process of elimination, what remains? This option. So if you go there, notice what happens now. What is it showing now? It's showing you all the things which are on the slide. They are shown in a particular order. Whatever at the bottom is behind, whatever is in top is in front, visually. So what are we interested in? The triangle. What are we not interested in right now? Oval and rectangle. So what does this look like? What does this look like? So if you close the eye, the object goes away. So I'll zoom out and show. Now what happens? It's gone. This one is gone. Now the triangle is there. You select it and do your job. Is that easy or difficult? Now you want a rectangle also, no problem, select it, make a change, job done, and then enable this. Easy? Useful or not? Now this button has been there for many, many years. Why didn't we click on it? That's why I showed you this slide. Why did I show you this slide in the beginning? On a tray during surgery, there are so many tools lying. Do we always use all the tools? No, but we know that those tools exist and whenever required, we pick up the correct tool. Exactly the same concept applies here. But we are not applying that concept when it comes to office. We are already experts at the upper half and we don't care about the lower half. So now, easy, done. Next time onwards, you are going to use the selection pane whenever you are going to work on a complicated slide. Simple? So now let's do one more thing. Word. Let's look at Word. Do you make tables in Word? Do those tables go out like this? If you copy paste from a web page or Excel or some other source, that width doesn't match and then that guy goes out. It's very frustrating. Am I right? So if you want to take a revenge on someone, what do you do? You create a long document, put 20, 30 tables in it, and just before sending the document to someone, drag the edge out of all the 30. Dragging it out is easy, getting it in is difficult, so let that guy struggle. Simplest way of doing revenge using technology. Now how do you get it in? I'm sure everyone have, every one of you have faced this problem many, many times in life. Everyone has found a solution. Correct? So tell me some solutions. Hmm. Yeah, but I can't reach it then. Okay, that's one method. If I can see the other end, I drag it. What else? Increase the width of the column. Very nice. Decrease the font size. Okay. Reduce the margin. Yes. Make it landscape, correct? Now there are two parties involved when you are working on office. There is you and in this case there is word. Okay, very simple. Now you have to start thinking who is helping whom. 
whatever you just described sounds like who is helping whom you are helping word why is word created so that it helps the humanity so whenever there is a role reversal like this that means your method is inefficient even if it works because it is working at the cost of your life because you are not allowing word to help you because you as you unki word ko samajhne wala nahi mere ko sab karna hai so you are increasing your work by struggling like this so now we have to assume word has to help me if i am ending up using word or excel or powerpoint whoever it is that means my method is inefficient so what am i showing you i am showing you a benchmark of detecting inefficiency because there are so many inefficiencies i can't show you all of them in 2 hours but if you understand the methodology of detecting inefficiency you can do it on your own so you are self reliant understand the concept so now that we have understood that word has to help us we have to tell word what we want and hopefully it will help us correct now why am i using the word hopefully why are we doing this struggle because we assume word help nahi kar sakta isliye mujhe ye sab karna padta hai that is the wrong thought process because microsoft has created this product over 25 years every minor in inefficiency which you are facing has already been noticed and provided for it's just that we are not looking at it so now suppose there is a long thesis you are writing and your boss is sitting next to you and you are doing drag and arrange and landscape for half an hour is anybody going to fire you will boss fire you or if you are the boss will you fire the subordinate saying iske liye pagar mil raha hai kya you have better things to do will you fire no because we also do the same thing when it comes to office there is no subordinate no boss everyone is pathetically inefficient that's the truth why am i saying so not because we have an ambition to be inefficient in every other aspect of what we do we want to be world class efficient best we in fact want to change benchmarks exceed benchmarks but that thought process has never been applied here so now i'm telling you the solution is already there you just have to find it now when you click on a table all of us know that there are two menus available there correct design or layout this looks like a design problem or a layout problem to you yeah. okay now look at all the options again and think which one may help us aur bada karo wo height and width it expects you to do it that means you are helping word auto fit and now which option abhi zyada sochne ka nahi apne paas time kam hai teenon try karo ek to chalega you have to be smart when you are exploring don't be too philosophical so in this case it is not content window means the page width actually so one click gets it in this feature is there for 22 years good or bad what are we trying to see right now proof of this are you getting slowly convinced now convinced already okay so let's go ahead so why does this happen what is the root cause underlying etiology whatever you want to call it it is not ignorance in that sense yes someone was saying yes so it looks like this let me i am not showing you one presentation i am jumping from various places because i have a large library of slides and i am only showing you the relevant ones so long back when did you learn by the way all this office did anyone teach you we have an engineer also amongst us did they teach you office no everyone learns it by trial and error correct so what happens कॉलेज डेज हमको ऐसे भी काम नहीं करना होता है जल्दी से निकल जाना है सो यू सी सो मेनी बटन डू यू वॉन्ट देम वेन यू सी सो मेनी बटन डू यू गेट एक्साइटेड नो काम होना है बात खत्म सो वी टेल माइक्रोसॉफ्ट नॉट यू कॉर्पोरेट पीपल टेल माइक्रोसॉफ्ट बिकॉज देव टू बाय लार्ज नंबर ऑफ कॉपीज ऑफ ऑफिस एंड दैट कॉस्ट अ लॉट एंड दैट्स अ रिकरिंग कॉस्ट दे टेल माइक्रोसॉफ्ट इतना बटन क्यों डाल रहे हो यार नहीं चाहिए छोड़ दो but they don't listen every two years they add a new version that adds 1000 more buttons 
So people are not excited, people are depressed, but Microsoft is not listening. So we find a simple solution. What is the solution? We stop looking at them. Abhi kya karega Microsoft? Jitna dalna hai dalo, mein dekhe gai nahi. Baat khatam. Problem solved because this may come ho raha hai. So, do you understand teleology? Teleology is what? Science of end result. So, as long as the end result is achieved, how I reach that place doesn't matter. Kaam ho raha hai, baat khatam. So, now we have already got this thought process established. In psychology, this is called inattentional blindness. If you don't pay attention that projector is making noise, air conditioning is making little noise, but we were masking it automatically. We are not doing it consciously. Subconsciously it is happening. Same thing happens to office and that happens in college days and that continues throughout your life. So now when you get an upgrade, what happens? Potentially more benefits have come to you, but nobody is impressed. So earlier you were using whatever, out of 7,000 buttons available, you were using 100. Now you have got 8,000 buttons. What will happen to your usage pattern? What will happen to the 100? It will increase or remain the same? No. It will decrease because pehle wala button bhi nahi milta hai wala. Correct? Because all the user interface changed and you are getting completely lost. So your efficiency goes down when you upgrade because pehle wala bhi cheez milta nahi. Over a period of few weeks you will figure it out and then you will stop looking at everything else. So this is the psychology behind our inefficiency. We are just not looking because we have decided what I know is enough. We know that we don't know. Correct? But are we worried about it? No. But in your field, you are not like that. You are wanting to find the recent advances. You are attending CME. You are trying to be best in whatever you do. But when it comes to office, we have decided what I don't know is not needed. Baat khatam. Seekhne ka sawali paida nahi hota. So this is the thought process which is wrong. We know that there are thousand extra features added, but we are assuming they are useless. Useless means what? Microsoft bhi pagar de na, developer ko. Q button dala, unke paas aise baita hai, kaam nahi hai, bola chalo, ek ek jan, char paas button dal do. Aise bhi pagar de na hai. Aise thodi hota hai. Every button comes from some user need, some inefficiency, some request from someone. So this is a wrong thought process. And then uh, we have another thing. I'm sure this discussion must have happened when I said I'm doing program on office. You may have a thought in mind, is it a basic course or an advanced course? Because if you go to bookstores, if you go and look at the typical description of training programs, there are basic and advanced programs. Am I right? Who decides which button is basic and which is advanced? I showed you two of them. Selection pane in PowerPoint and auto fit in Word. What would you classify it as, basic or advanced? How many things is advanced? Only one? Two? Okay, whenever I show a new feature now, I am going to do this poll and you will see things changing. So, basic idea kya hai? I am gynecologist, I am orthopedician, I am XYZ. I am going to focus on my core skill. That is where I will go into the depth. Office is a secondary product for me, so I only need to know the basics about it. That is the thought process which is wrong. Because in the process we are not exploring. So, practical definition of basic and advanced. What I know is basic and what I don't know should be called, no, no, that's what we actually call, but what it should be called is ignorance. But who wants to call themselves ignorant? So we give it a stylish looking name called advanced. So this is also a wrong thought process. So I'm going to show you in the next slide the right thought process. Previous slide showing you wrong thought process. Next slide showing you right thought process. What should be there between the two slides from a PowerPoint point of view? Very nice. Transition. That is when you put a transition. Do you, everyone understands what is a transition? When one slide moves into next, by default it just moves from one to another. But if you want a special effect in between where first slide dissolves into the next one, that's called a transition. Many people don't use it. And some people, few people are absolutely in love with the idea of transition as a concept itself. They don't care content kya hai, unko transition mein maja hai. So wo karte kya hai, select all and apply random transition. Usme kya hota hai, first, after first five slides anyway half the audience is asleep. 
the remaining audience which is trying to fall asleep is now playing a game with themselves ki naya next transition kya aayega content pe kisi ko interest waise bhi nahi tha hone wala hi nahi hai even the presenter doesn't know next transition kya aayega so maza aata hai so now i am going to show you when to use transition that's a thought process if there is a thought transition then you use a transition step number 1 the second question you have to ask is which transition there are 43 types of transition कौन सा करने का तो मालूम नहीं है कोई तो रैंडमली पहले दिखता है उस पर चार पांच दिखता है उस पर क्लिक करने का देखा जाएगा सो अनलेस यू हैव सीन ऑल द फोर्टी थ्री यू विल नॉट नो विच इज द मोस्ट सूटेड फॉर दैट पर्टिकुलर सिचुएशन करेक्ट सो नाउ आई विल शो यू द करेक्ट ट्रांजेक्शन आई एम सेइंग दिस इज अ रॉन्ग थॉट प्रोसेस रिमूव इट फ्रॉम योर माइंड एंड फॉर्म अ न्यू थॉट प्रोसेस now i discuss this so much normally i would have just shown the next slide i would not have told you about transition but that slide would have made an impact in your mind understand so the purpose of powerpoint is not to make the audience fall asleep the purpose of powerpoint is to keep them awake and manipulate their minds to get what you want and put forward your point with power that we forget So now tell me is this the perfect transition it's much better than just showing one slide after another it's a relevant transition but what did i say remove this thought from your mind that happened and form a new thought does it look like the new thought was formed or was it already there it was already there we just unmasked it but in reality that thought is not there what am i saying what is the new thought start exploring and then decide whether it is useful or not don't just give up on it saying because i don't know it's useless so now that fact that this thought is forming is not seen properly so the correct transition for this is this now mind what the transition is called first see the effect can anyone tell me the transition i don't have any prizes to give you but i'm sure all of us will clap for you anyone tell me the name of the transition which should go between these two slides okay so this is the wrong thought remove it from your mind and form a new thought first explore and then decide does it make sense so if you use the right feature in the right place it has phenomenal impact if you use the wrong feature in the wrong place it devalues whatever you are doing whether it's word excel or powerpoint and because there are too many permutation combination it is statistically impossible to discover the right way of doing it by trial and error understand so this is how we use office more effectively it's more of a thought process problem than a technology problem with that in mind let's go and look at some stuff any questions by the way if any questions stop me any time even if you have a question unrelated to what i'm showing no problem stop and ask because you may get some ideas when you are seeing something the transition called vertex is there in 2010 not the latest latest is 2013 but even the older version had 32 transitions most of us were never seen it but now that you have understood the power of using the right transition and let me give you one more example i'm just going to add a slide here and i'm saying if you do this if you proactively learn and apply it correctly what is the impact on you what is the benefit to you let's take one example i'm just putting a simple slide here which says if you do this what is the benefit you will grow faster in whatever you do your impact will be greater you will be more efficient so now i want to show you that you will grow this is the next slide and i want to just keep this slide very simple to illustrate something so this is the slide from this slide i want to show this slide now between the two slides what transition should be there tell me i'll make this slide look slightly nicer so that it looks like growth now this is a black slide this is a this slide now whatever happens between the two slides it should look like you are growing correct zoom no this is a new transition uh, 2013 you will not know it but now that i show you you will understand the importance of it so this one you know now if you do this you will grow faster When was the last time you clapped? Come on. <laughs> You're not clapping for me by the way. Why are you clapping? 
because when you go back you are going to use this and whatever you do is going to be more impactful with lesser effort that is called efficiency someone needs to find out who that guy is <coughs> okay any other questions am i going too fast or too slow is it good speed can i go faster okay fine so we have done the inefficiency demo let's go further so here are the top 10 mistakes most mistakes come into one category at a very high level all mistakes can be summarized with one sentence don't help the product product should help you keep that in mind you will detect mistakes so what am i really trying to show you two steps first assume that you are not assume get convinced is it good news or bad news the fact that everyone is inefficient is not the bad news the fact that you don't know you are inefficient is the bad news so if a disease spreads it's called what epidemic chota level pe then and uske upar kya pandemic doesn't mean 7 billion people have it few million across geographies have it correct uske upar kya if everyone has a disease it's called what very nice it's not called omnidemic it is called normal that is the problem with office everyone is inefficient so nobody thinks it is a problem it's normal maybe aisa hai mera boss bhi aisa hai mera competitor bhi aisa hai zindagi chal rahi hai but at the cost of what your life forget the department forget your customer bo boss it's your life which is burning every day so the fact that you understand that there is a problem is a good thing because when you know there is a problem whether you like it or not you are going to do something about it that's the first step in problem solving techniques correct any book or any course you attend on problem solving this is the first step acknowledge it and do something about it so now that we know we will see what to do that also i am telling you now that we know everything is inefficient we have to detect diagnose it first and then find the treatment or find the best or smartest or fastest or most optimal method of doing it so detect inefficient method find the best method it's very easy to write two bullets it's not going to be miraculously automatic but once you have the right thought process of exploration this can happen on an ongoing basis you don't need external help so let's start with uh, which product now you have to tell me i i'm going to cover word excel powerpoint for sure and one note also but what do i start with okay how many want powerpoint first okay how many want word first how many want excel first okay so powerpoint wins now simple requirement how do i put powerpoint in the first place it is in place 3 i have to put it in number 1 how do i do that at least that very simple activity you should be doing efficiently no do you no tell me the methods cut paste or drag drop two methods which one is better all of you know both methods so if you know multiple ways of doing something you will obviously use the better of the two which one is better and if i tell you both are bad so here is another thing i have learned by doing so many sessions and observing what people do whenever you have something to do the first thought which comes to your mind is always inefficient don't even try it just discard it it is guaranteed inefficient try the second thought maybe it has a higher chance in this case both thoughts are wrong both work but they are bad i will not tell you why they are bad or should i if i do this cut notice this guy will remain when i say paste this guy will stick like that then i'll have to press one extra enter then i'll have to come here and press one extra backspace is that efficient no but kya farak padta hai mera zindagi aise hi chal raha hai barso se so this is bad the drag drop is slightly better but it has to be done carefully now if i do this notice what happened depending on the product things can go wrong anyway so i'll show you the best way let's 
Is this better? Is it better or not? No, no. First, I accept that this is better. First, I accept that you are inefficient. Then I will tell you. In fact, this time I am not going to tell you how I did it. Because you have lived entire life without knowing it. What is the difference? Forget the fact that this method exists. Can you do that now? Now you can't do that. There is no mathematic or whatever medical method available to forget something. Correct? So what am I trying to show you? I am trying to show you something very, very important. What is important in this whole thing is awareness about what is available. The exact skill can come later. Even if I don't tell you the solution, now you know there is a better way. So every time you are trying to do this in life, your brain will keep troubling you. You may curse me, but still you are not going to find the answer. So what will you do today, tomorrow, day after? You will go and figure it out. So the operational skill comes only if there is awareness. So creating awareness is more important than the actual skill. Understand the concept? So this is very simple actually. This is a shortcut. If I use up and down arrow, just the cursor moves. Everyone knows that. If I want to move that thing along with the cursor, so what should I do? I should do something extra other than moving up and down key. Some special keys I have to use. What special keys do you know? Shift, control and enter. Some combination of them will work. So now I have given you a hint, find it. Or do you want the actual answer? Utana to mehnat karo yaar, come on. Shift, alt, up arrow, down arrow will work. Shift, alt, up, down. So now that I have shown you, I will ask you a quiz. I have a document here which has few paragraphs. One of the paragraphs is red in color. I want to move this red paragraph to the first position. Normally you would have selected it and done, you, now you know. But now you know the efficient method. So what should I do now? Uh, हाँ तो सिलेक्ट करना है ना पहला मैंने बोला क्या सिलेक्ट करने को मैंने बोला सिलेक्ट करने को तो क्यों करने को बिकॉज वी हैव टू हेल्प वर्ड फर्स्ट दैट इज व्हाट आई एम सेइंग वी आर स्टिल थिंकिंग ये डम चीज को कैसे समझेगा मुझे पैराग्राफ ऊपर करना है आई हैव टू टेक द एफर्ट ऑफ सिलेक्टिंग द पैराग्राफ नो दिस गाय स्मार्टर देन यू थिंक यू जस्ट क्लिक इन द पैराग्राफ एंड देन प्रेस शिफ्ट ऑल्ट अप इट विल सिलेक्ट इट ऑटोमेटिकली If I had not shown you, you would have been struggling lifelong selecting that paragraph. So every moment of our time we spend with office is a pitiable exercise. Now you know this, I am sure you will use it. But still, you will not use it in another place. I already have a table here. So let's say this table. I have memory, hard disk, CPU. I want hard disk to go on the first position. What will you do? You would still not have thought of shift, alt, up arrow. And even if you had thought of shift, alt, up arrow, you would be tempted to select this. None of which is required. Just click anywhere in that row and move it up. Now please think about your past life and think how much energy you have spent in doing this. That copy paste of row never works properly. Sometimes row becomes inside the row, table inside the table, it goes as a separate table. All sorts of junk happens because your method was inefficient. Useful? Good. So in the same context, let me show you one more thing. Whenever you have to draw a diagram, there is a feature in PowerPoint called Smart Art. How many of you know that? Okay, one minute. How many of you know that? Few, few people. Okay. So I have to explain this first. So tell me a process, five step process, quick, anything. Pre op preparation, what is it? NBM? I have forgotten now, 25 years, come on. Bolo? Okay, whatever. Now I want to show this as a process. This looks like bullets. Bullets means this is the best sedative in the world. Teen slide dikhao bullet ka, 90% audience. Any insomnia patient, just give any of your presentations, no side effects. 
नाउ डेज वी कैन सी इट ऑन आईपैड ऑल्सो कोई भी टैबलेट पे देखो सो जाएगा टैबलेट इन अ डिफरेंट कॉन्टेक्स्ट है सो वी हैव टू शो इट लुकिंग लाइक अ प्रोसेस अभी प्रॉब्लम दूसरा आता है येस वी वॉन्ट टू शो इट एज अ प्रोसेस तो क्या करेगा फाइव स्टेप्स तो एक बॉक्स निकालेंगे फिर अभी पांच बॉक्स चाहिए कैसा करेगा कॉपी एंड पेस्ट 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 फिर एक्स्ट्रा टाइम से इन अलाइनिंग देम पुटिंग टेक्स्ट मेकिंग बोल्ड आइटेलिक अंडरलाइन चेंजिंग कलर नो देन वी आर हेल्पिंग पावर पॉइंट पावर पॉइंट इज नॉट हेल्पिंग अस सो वट वी डू डोंट डू एनी ऑफ दिस जस्ट टाइप द बुलेट्स we don't want to show bullets to people but as an input it is okay it's not final output yet now i know powerpoint can help me but i don't know where is the solution earlier what did we do we went to the table tell tools and we saw layout because that was something to do with the entire table here this is something to do only with the bullets so if you want to find out idhar main kya kar sakta hu you have to right click right click is the simplest method of learning why because whatever is shown in right click those options are guaranteed to be useful in that place where you right click so it's automatic learning it is pulling the relevant things and giving it to you all these options may be there upstairs but they are fixed these are dynamic so notice what happens just remember these options now if i right click on the slide notice the options changed because i right click in a different place so now tell me look at the options and tell me convert to smart art very nice and then maybe some of you are seeing it for the first time so it shows you 20 of them and then you just take your cursor don't click it temporarily draws the correct diagram and shows you a preview quick preview if you don't like either of them just take a cursor away your bullets are still alive so now which one should we draw it's a simple process If you use this diagram, a patient का operation होगा ही नहीं वो ऐसे ही करते रहेगा रोज एन बी एम रोज शेव एंड प्रयोग शेव करने को भी कुछ बचा नहीं वॉट आई मै ट्राइंग टू शो मिस यूज लीड्स टू नॉट जस्ट रिडक्शन इन केपेबिलिटी इट एक्चुअली कैन मिस कम्युनिकेट दिस इज एन ऑब्वियस ग्रॉस एग्जाम्पल बट देर आर अदर प्लेसेज वेर दे मी फाइनर लेवल ऑफ मिस कम्युनिकेशन सो will take simple linear process there are three of them this is too small this is too small this is nice and big so job done now each step is different anything monotonous people fall asleep so each each one should have a different color so now what will we think chalo is pe click karenge fir format mein jayenge fir shape fill itne sare color hai abhi dekhen kaun sa dalenge isko now many people have grotesque sense of color unless you have some graphic talent by inherent don't go by your color sense have you seen slides with yellow background and white foreground yeah. where neither the presenter nor the audience can see what is happening but who cares they are asleep anyway <laughs> now people have developed a skill isme to samajhta nahi kaun so raha hai but in a small conference room you can't sleep right some people still do but now we have become smarter many people almost everyone has developed the skill of keeping their eyes open nodding also beech beech mein awaaz bhi aata hai some and then actually they are mentally asleep and then suddenly mentally they will awaken because of some disturbance and then they have to prove that they have been listening so they ask intelligent questions which has nothing to do with what is happening because they have lost track so please don't do something on your side which will induce sleep so don't trust your color sense that's why microsoft hired the best designers in the world and they gave you a button here called change colors so these color combinations have been decided by experts so you just choose the color combination you like whichever you like now it's still looking flat things which have a 3d effect look better less sleep inducing so again there are many formats given here this is called styles so different styles you move the cursor it will change it and you choose don't do things which are obviously bad for example this is not a good idea but this may be a good idea and now assuming you want to talk about each step some people don't fall asleep they have come there to disturb you so before you have talked about nbm they will talk about problems associated with shifting to ot 
we want to prevent that so in bullets what do we do things are shown one by one so that we do by animation so same thing we do here now which animation to choose which one will i choose which one sorry appear if you just want something to come without any special effects appear is the simplest and fastest one any other things <coughs> how many animations are there one is called none which is the current case and how many are there six are visible how how does microsoft tell you that there is more yeah that thing the problem is we never notice that thing and even if you notice it say mere ko nahi chahiye advanced jaane ka nahi udhar so please drop the drop downs the simplest method of learning why is there a drop down not to trouble you because there was no place to show if it had shown 43 animations there powerpoint kahan banayega jagah hi nahi hai screen pe isliye ye karna padta hai so use this now we get many more how many more earlier we were seeing one row now we see two rows correct yes or no yes if you scroll down there is more entrance effects what is the chance of any human being clicking on it zero chahiye kisko more already takleef ho rahi hai so again this is a psychological problem so just to illustrate that problem visually let's switch tracks so this is another psychological issue we have whenever we see buttons like this our brain doesn't read what is written there it reads differently it's interpreted live you don't even understand it so what is more interpreted as jaane ka hi nahi udhar already ye takleef de raha hai aur main ja ke kyu jaau and if you go there by mistake kabhi se galti se click ho jata hai then what do we do your best friend galat jagah pe gaya to escape daba ke nikal jaao so we have to again change the thought process this doesn't mean more trouble it means more benefits it's for you it's not there to give salary to microsoft employees it is to make your presentations or word or excel be better but we don't do that so if you go back and do a small exercise look at your keyboard when you go back what has happened there kya hua escape button ko usko printing nikal gaya over use se aur uska baju mein ek neighbor hai bechara uska naam kya hai F1 उसका मतलब क्या है उधर कोई जाता नहीं है तो फ्रेश बटन है नो वेर एंड टेयर नो मैकेनिकल डैमेज फ्रेश सो व्हाट इज द प्रैक्टिकल यूज ऑफ F1 की टेक्निकल थियोरटिकल यूज इज हेल्प बट तेरे कोई करता ही नहीं जाता ही नहीं है सो व्हाट इज द प्रैक्टिकल यूज ऑफ F1 की कम ऑन क्विक देर इज अ प्रैक्टिकल यूज फॉर एफ की नॉट टू गो टू हेल्प बिकॉज वो जाता ही नहीं है if any other key on the keyboard gets spoiled you can safely remove the f1 key and put it there because it's mechanically perfect so again thought process use this less don't run away from your benefits explore them do you understand i'm not just showing you a thought process i'm also showing you how to use powerpoint more effectively it's a simple black and white slide some simple photograph but the conveying of the meaning is done effectively now any questions how did this happen how did this happen do you notice what just happened both of these guys came one came and stopped abruptly other guy came and settled down nicely which one looks better the first one or second one depends on the situation but if there is no specific context to it then the second one looks better so i uh, if time permits i'll tell you how to do that but let's come back so bottom line now we use okay we'll use appear but now appear has no animation let's use fade fade looks professional 
So now what happens? The entire thing is shown with fade effect. Is that what we wanted? No. So what should we do? If this was a bullets slide, just to compare, this is what we do in bullets also, correct? So if there was bullets only and I had applied exactly the same fade animation, the effect is different. Now it doesn't show all four. It shows only the first one, then second one, then third one, then fourth one. That does not happen when you apply exactly the same animation to a smart art. What happens? It applies the effect but to the whole diagram. That's not what we wanted. So what should we do now? Lying. Give up or explore? So explore. The left side we have already chosen the effect. Transition nahi. Transition is between two slides. Ye effect choose kiya hai. Abhi ye effect ke baare mein options hai. Baju mein rakha usko. Very nice. So now in few few clicks we have a nice looking slide. And I have control over what I speak. Is that good? Useful? All right. So let's, where did we start from? Shift, Alt, up and down. Now, why did I say Shift, Alt, up and down? Why did I come here? For whatever reason, if I had made a mistake in the order of these things, suppose I wanted atropine to be the fourth one, what should I do now? I have already made the diagram. There is no bullets to use Shift, Alt, up, arrow, down. Now what will I try to do? I will select this guy, try to put it here, then move this guy, put it here, correct? So what is our rule? First thought which comes is always wrong. Don't even try it. So now look carefully. This is the diagram. What does this arrow mean? Is it there for decoration purpose? Must be having some meaning. The only way to find what the meaning is to go there. Cursor change. Notice. Now what does it show you? It shows you the original one. Now you want to change the order, so what will I do? Not copy paste and drag drop, shift alt up and down and then the actual diagram will get affected. Notice what's happening. So once you learn something, it has a long lasting impact. This is like cross pollination. Alright, so let's go further. Any questions so far? Any questions? So now let's look at the mistakes in PowerPoint. First title, first slide is what? Some titles, okay. Second slide typically is what? Correct? Whatever, I'm just typing some junk. Third slide will be what? No, no. Now what will be the third slide? One. Something about one. Correct? Now when you started the presentation, you said, okay, I will do this in half an hour, 45 minutes, whatever time you have allocated. So I will go to whatever that topic was, first topic, say one. And then I will type something about it. Then I want to put a picture there. Then I will put a picture, something like that. So let's put some picture. Now this is too big, then what will I do, try to align it, put it somewhere, where to put? Is there a rule, where to put the picture? You should put it anywhere, put it anywhere. How big you should put it? No difference. Put it. By the way, notice what is happening here. If it is 2013, even if I am randomly moving the picture, it is showing me some guides. You see that dotted line which came? It's coming while I am moving it. What is it saying? Now it's aligned to the top of this guy. Now it is aligned to the center of this text box. Now it is aligned to the bottom. It is not looking at the bullets. It is looking at the box. Understand? So this automatically guides you. So here things become little easier. Now notice if I go on the right side, this is aligned to this. What is this guy? This text box. Are you getting it? So anyway, we put this and then 
we did something now i want to do something on top of it so i put a text box i put something so 10 minute isme gaya theek hai now suddenly we'll do second slide and do some similar junk suddenly by this time you realize that you had kept one hour for the whole thing and 45 minutes already gone correct you can't un extend it in unlimited point of manner so now in the remaining 15 minutes what will you do correct so now if you look at the distribution of attention you have paid to the whole process of making that presentation where did you spend maximum amount of time in the first few slides and what does the audience remember if at all they are awake what happens to the last so defeating the whole purpose of your effort so what is the simplest rule when you are you are making a presentation make the last slides first is that difficult no it's not going to increase or decrease the time you take but at least the time you are spending more attention or care if if at all you call this care is being spent on things which are more likely to be noticed and remembered but that's not all the second mistake we do is notice now let's take this slide itself i want to discuss this and i want to show this correct so how many items are there on the slide two two items correct generally when you know you are going to put a picture what will you do you will go to a new slide right and then put the picture first or description first picture first to ye beech mein aata hai na isko kya karne ka baaju mein rakhne ka ha but picture if you do like this gadbad hota hai so first delete it yes or no first delete the unwanted stuff and then struggle so now what happens when you put a picture you will put the picture but it has nothing to guide it understand it's now floating extra bahar ja raha hai then you are wasting time getting it in and then kya hota hai sometimes we do it like this then the whole pathology has changed this is really pathological now so how do you make sure that the picture when you resize doesn't get distorted you do it from the corner correct but if you do it from the corner it grows or shrinks from the corner it's no longer in the center how do you put it in the center now because this text box is there we can drag it and it will show you the but if you are using older version this will not happen then we put it in approximate center so to avoid all this from happening microsoft gave you that text box so don't delete it notice it is saying click to add text but it also has one more thing here called picture so if i click here and put exactly the same picture notice the difference what did it do it resized it and automatically put it in the center your job is done easy or difficult that's why i say first thought is always wrong don't delete those things those are for your good but in this case we want one more text box abhi kahan se dalenge wo isko idhar dalenge pehle then we'll put a text box ekdam ambitious aisa text box banayenge and when you release it wo thaka hua aisa kabhi kabhi chota ho jata hai now we put something see what happened it looking very sad there are no bullets then you get frustrated so what will you do now increase the font size agreed but bullets nahi aaya to bullet dalenge to ek aadmi ko aisa bullet aata hai ganda then you say undo then we we'll select all then we will say bullets ye ho gaya sometimes what happens if the thing goes beyond ye wala aisa hota hai hota hai ki nahi then what do we do space bar bhi nahi chalta hai udhar enter dabaa ke space bar chalta hai but then bullet aata hai then bullet delete karne ka fir space bar dabane ka who is helping whom come on yes so what should we do we have never told powerpoint that we want two things there correct that's why the putting of the second guy becomes your responsibility so at this stage 
we went wrong so first step was correct we put the picture now this was designed for only one item on the slide we want to see is powerpoint giving me a method of giving two things on the slide how do we do that layout very nice so there are many layouts one of them is called two content now this you should have thought of before creating the slide but we are doing it as an afterthought never mind so even if now you click on it notice what happens this guy goes nicely there and you get proper bullets understand now suppose for whatever reason it's a picture rich presentation and you want four pictures on every slide unfortunately microsoft cannot cater to 1 billion people's wishes so they have only given two what do we do then take two and then struggle correct no at this point if you want four pictures what do you do these layouts are created by microsoft that's all does it mean we can't create our own layouts we can so if you require four items on slides repeatedly not just one off slide you may do it manually but if it's a regular requirement then i want my layout to appear here so how do i create that layout that is called a master so you go to view and go to slide master now it shows you the layout of the current slide which is the two slide layout don't disturb it because sooner or later you are going to use it for other slides right click and say duplicate this layout now this layout has a name it is called two content layout we just created this guy as a duplicate so it gets a weird name called what one underscore two content layout which looks very demeaning so right click and say rename and then give it a name so in this case i am calling it whatever i like four pics you can give any name just by giving the name nothing happens you have to do it so now what do i want i want this guy to go here this guy to go here and i want two more place holders what do i do i just copy them down how do i copy them down if you press control key while dragging whatever you are dragging gets copied press control key while dragging whatever is being dragged gets copied anywhere in windows so now we have a nice layout now i have finished doing my job with the master so i say close this of course nothing has happened because this slide currently is still using two column layout so now if i go to next slide it will still be two column just to show you what happens i am going to put two pictures here and as an after thought i realize that i want two more pictures what should i do now i have already created a layout so i go to layout it appears here now nicely and notice what happens now when you say four pick the existing two will not be disturbed they'll be resized as much as possible and then you put the remaining two wherever you want done this is called efficiency what i'm showing is not new this is there ever since powerpoint was created any questions labels yeah i'll i'll come to labels now suppose you have lots of pictures it's like an atlas you have too many pictures and you want to show step by step surgery or different views of the same ct scan something like that you have 20 pictures you'll still have to do this jugglery by creating five slides and clicking 20 times to add a picture am i right that itself is inefficient repetition means inefficiency don't do it so now if i have 20 pictures or let's say whatever pictures i have here all these pictures i want to put in one stroke what should i do there are one two whatever pictures you see here how many of them nine pictures i want one picture per slide that you know already insert a slide insert click insert picture nine times i don't want to do that what should i do so new different question now i want one picture per slide normally i go to insert and pictures correct look there i have 30 pictures i want 30 pictures on 30 slides but i don't want to do it 30 times thank you have you seen it before 
it is there for again 22 years so now when you go to photo album as the name suggests it asks you to select all the pictures in one go so now i'm going to select all the pictures control a is select all by the way i say insert and then i say create it will create a new presentation and this is the presentation i just created it in front of you is it good or bad and why are you so depressed <laughs> no i know why you are depressed because no 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 you are calculating in your past life how much time energy money you have wasted not knowing all this right you are calculating that but don't do that past is gone there is no undo button in life there is undo button in office though do you use undo how often do you use undo button very often why was the undo button created what is the purpose you did some mistake and you want to revert the mistake that's the purpose of undo button correct but that's not what we use it for why do we use it let me explain so let's take a very simple example i want to copy paste something from excel to powerpoint is that common some data in excel chart kuch to hai paste karna hai so let's do that So I have some data here which I want to copy paste. So let's do that. Never mind what the data is right now, just for demo purpose. So I have this data and I want to copy paste. How do I do that? Or well, let's make it even simple. I have three items here. I want to put them as bullets in a slide. No formatting, no Excel data, nothing. No background, no foreground, just bullets. Is that simple? Do we know how to do it? Only one person said. First time I asked, everyone was aware of how to do. Yes, we know some method of doing it, but what what is the chance that that method is good? Zero. Trust me, because it's statistically impossible to be efficient while using Office because we have never made an effort to be efficient. First method which worked sticks. Anyway, so I copy, then I go to PowerPoint, and let's go to a new slide. this time layout we want the simple one and now i paste then what happens aise thaka hua aata hai very depressing and what is the knee jerk reaction now undo come on because what happened is not what you wanted so damage control to karo pehle so undo but undo doesn't give you what you want it brings it back to square one then how do you do what you want then we will find some other manual way of doing it whatever that method is but i am just talking about undo as a concept not this particular scenario in this scenario what will you do you will go to paste special now paste special dusra problem hai too many options here abhi humko chahiye picture abhi char type ka picture aata hai kaun sa dalenge sabse less scary kaun sa spelling dikh raha hai bitmap to wo dalenge unfortunately that is the worst format to choose never choose bitmap i'll tell you why i'll just choose bigger amount of data but in this case we just want it as bullets what should we have chosen here not picture what should we have chosen we don't want the formatting we don't want excel what do we want just the unformatted text now if you are doing this in word you will see two types of unformatted text one simple and one unicode don't use unicode unless you are doing something multilingual that increases file size anyway so if you do one unformatted text at least now it should work no wapas aisa alag text ye over smart hai maine bola tha kya alag text box mein dalne ko usne dala abhi can i fight with it no i have no choice but to select this now majboori mein cut it and then finally bullets aaya understood so whenever you press undo what do you think of does it have any emotional reaction when you press undo 
Uh, so now onwards, you have to feel extremely depressed when you press undo. Why? Because undo is trying to tell you something. What is it trying to tell you? अगर आता था बराबर से तो अंडू करने की जरूरत ही नहीं पड़नी चाहिए सो अंडू इज एक्सपोजिंग यूर गुड न्यूज बैड न्यूज गुड न्यूज बिकॉज नाउ दैट यू नो दिस इज एक्सपोजिंग यूर इग्नोरेंस ऑब्वियसली वॉन्ट टू बी नॉलेजेबल सो यू आर गोइंग टू यूज इट एज अंडरस्टैंड द कंसेप्ट सो अगेन वॉट डू वी वॉन्ट टू डू We want to copy from Excel, which we have done. Now we pasted it. कुछ तो गंदा हुआ, चलेगा. Now what Microsoft did is Excel is like a grid. PowerPoint doesn't understand Excel, so they have to find a common format with both of them understand. That common format happens to be a table. So that's why this got pasted as a table. You don't like it, fine. But Microsoft has to choose some method by default. क्या करना चाहिए? If you press paste and Microsoft asks you, "Kya karo?" Every time it will, you will get frustrated. So they choose what most people in the world like in that situation. That's called the default or standard <coughs> action. Correct? Standard action. Now sometimes you want standard action, sometimes you don't want. Microsoft knows the non-standard things also which you will want, and Microsoft wants to tell you that it is prepared with all the non-standard things also you want. How does it tell you that? If it shows you a dialog saying yes, you throw anything at me, I am ready. You will get irritated. So it has to show it in a very subtle manner. That's why that thing comes. This thing. Have you seen this thing before? Do you hate it or not? Everyone in the world hates it. This feature was added 18 years back. One billion people use Office every day, and everyone hates it. And Microsoft knows it. So why are they? Why are they so? insensitive to customers if they know everyone hated it 18 years back they added it next year they understood everyone hates it what should they have done they should have removed it correct if they wrote it they can remove it it's very easy for them they have not done that why have they not done that because they like irritating 1 billion people no their 50% business comes from office why have they kept it in spite of knowing it's irritating because some day out of irritation frustration vengeance you will click on it and then you will benefit from it so now it is saying this is what i did the first one i can do four different things you tell me what you want i will do it for you so problem is now these icons don't mean anything to you other than the fact that they look different what will happen when you click on each one of them that's also trial and error then you click on it then undo then click on the second one usme bhi takleef hai so now they have made it so nice you just take your cursor don't click this is how it will look or this is how it will look or this is how it will look or this is how it will look this one is a text so it bent there so it's a what if kind of analysis you just move your cursor it shows you what to do understand now we want text so it still it is misbehaving separate text box q because you never told powerpoint where you want it so to be on the safer side it puts it in this text box so whenever you are copy pasting remember you have to answer two questions where to paste and how to paste which question should be answered first obviously because i have written it first so how do you answer that question i have copied from excel that part is easy Now I have come to PowerPoint and I have to tell PowerPoint where I want to paste it. How do I do that? Hmm? Come on. इधर लिखा है ना यार क्लिक तो कोई पढ़ता ही नहीं है वो बीस बरस से वो बेचारा बोल क्लिक करो. Why have we not clicked on it? Not because we have not read it. This is again another case of misinterpretation. We read it as click to type text. That's why Microsoft has carefully chosen the word add, but कोई किसी ने पढ़ा ही नहीं, interpret होगा ही नहीं. So click there, that answers the first question. Then paste, let it misbehave, then answer the question how. So you got bullets. Where and how is called copy paste. Understood? 
So now what is the process whenever you are copy pasting? Let's take the same example differently. I want this to go as is it is looking now with formatting. So again, I click here, then I paste. This time I want it to look like a picture. So this is table, this is embed means the entire Excel file gets embedded. This is a picture, so I keep it. But because I small now, you have to resize it. How do you resize it without disturbing the center? I told you. Drag from the corner will retain the shape and proportions. It will still grow from that. How do you keep it in the center? Press control key and then drag. That's called grow from center. That's how you copy paste. So what is the new method now? Copy, click, paste, choose. Better than before? But is it the most effective? Still four steps. So Microsoft went one step further. They said don't do that. Copy is okay. Now you know you are going to choose. So might as well do it upfront. So don't click there, you right click there and see what happened. I have not pasted yet. Before pasting I am choosing. So all the options which were there after pasting are already here. So now if this is the first time I am seeing it, I will have to move my cursor over it and then it will show me what happened and then the data may be so big that the rest of the menu may come in the way. So notice what happens now when I take my cursor. The menu disappears so that you can see what's happening and then you keep it. So now the best method is copy as usual, right click and then choose. That is how you copy paste. If you do this across the board, life will improve. Now I don't have time to show copy paste. By the way, I'll give you one resource which you should start using. There are thousands of places on internet I also write a blog, it's called Efficiency 365. So I started writing this on 1st first, uh, uh, first November last year. So notice October 31st I wrote welcome and what was the first article? How to copy paste efficiently. I thought one article should be enough. It wasn't, so I wrote another one. That was also not enough, then I wrote another one. So now I have 14 part series on how to copy paste. Please read it, your life will change. And like that there are 480 articles on that blog and every day I write one more. That's why it's called Efficiency 365. This was the article I wrote yesterday or today rather. How to make 12 pie charts in one second. I'll show you that. Alright, so far so good. Now let's go and look at pictures. We do a lot of things in pictures and I want to show you how to make them better. Any questions so far? So right now I'm just going to keep one picture. And I post paste this picture. Right now I'm just doing like this. Now just to show you, I'm going to copy this picture and make two copies of it right now. How did I do that? Control drag. Easy. Now I'm just going to do one extra thing there and tell me which one looks better. I didn't change any color. Right one looks better? Why? Not border, it has something else. It's called a shadow. By putting a little bit of shadow, it looks as though it is raised on the surface and breaks the monotony. How do you do that? Very simple. You click on the picture, you will see picture tools. In picture tools, we have something called picture style. So open this and just take your cursor one time, few seconds you spend just to see what options are available here. Just move to the next one, visually imbibe what is happening and then you will know what happens. I'm not suggesting you apply all these to a laparoscopy thing, but this is learning what is available. It's called building a visual vocabulary because whatever happens in PowerPoint by reading the name you will never understand unless you see it in action. So this is called building a visual vocabulary. 
obviously this is a bad idea for laparoscopy correct this is absolutely a bad idea because it distorts it looks 3d so what is simplest if in doubt just put a shadow makes a lot of difference but in some cases that thing may be good for example i'm going to take some excel data now let's take some data like this and i'm going to paste it as a picture how i'm pasting it you know now yeah all that now i have made it like this and this is showing now if i just make one little change there i'll keep the original one and i'll keep a copy just to show you the difference one little change see the difference there is a reflection also which looks nice so once you know what is available you can choose which one is relevant in which place now coming to this one this is a laparoscopy thing what do people expect should be a rectangle or a circle it's a scope right so it should be circular but for whatever reason this picture is rectangular how do i make it a circle yes picture tools no 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 so there is one more thing required called crop so i have to teach you crop crop is very important i'll show you how let's say i want to keep only this legion what will i do everyone knows crop so what will i do i will drag it from all sides and both sara trial and error ke baad then i will figure out what i want to keep correct that's not the only way to do crop another way of doing crop is just decide how much space you want to allocate first the remaining picture is still seen so drag it inside that's much faster usually nice sir that's one way of cropping another way of cropping is i want it as a circle so you go to crop as i said drop the drop down which we have never done in life and then there is crop to shape and then all the shapes in powerpoint are available for cropping now i want circle unfortunately this is not going to be a perfect circle no problem again i click on crop and then i press shift key and then i'll get a perfect circle and then i can bring it in and then i can keep it now sometimes what happens is this this is a nice picture and remember now i can resize it also but now it's looking a little darker what should i do change brightness contrast where do i do that again in picture tools earlier also brightness contrast was there but earlier what was the problem brightness contrast were shown as this what were they shown as they were shown as sliders like this so there was too much of trial and error to do brightness contrast that is still there but now we have a nice new way of doing it you go here to corrections and notice what's happening here it has taken that picture and applied different contrast and brightness and it's visually showing you how it's going to look so just move your cursor there don't look there look at the picture and whichever sounds most relevant to you keep it there so maybe this one looks better understand that's another way of doing it now one more problem we always have with pictures for example this one is i want that particular specimen but i don't want the thing which is behind it because my slide has its own background correct so if i have a nice design like this and this was the slide and on top of it i paste the picture it looks very bad correct what do i want i want that purple background how do i remove the background normally you would go to photoshop for such things but everyone doesn't have photoshop everyone doesn't know photoshop so what do you do 
Yes, very nice. Go to picture tools and there is a very beautiful tool here called remove background. Now people can throw any picture at it. PowerPoint has no clue what you want. So it gives you a rectangle like this. Just encompass what you want, your area of interest perfectly in the rectangle as snugly as possible. Notice it is done, but it is still not done one thing that shadow also you don't want. So what do you do now? Pink part will be removed, rest of it will be kept. So now you say mark areas to remove. Obviously with a shaky mouse cursor you are not going to be able to do this perfectly. So you just draw a line there. It is smart enough to pick it up with few tweaks here and there depending on the complexity of the picture. You should be able to keep exactly what you want. Got it? So now when I say keep changes, notice what it does. You can do a longer one also. It's very smart. So this is good enough. And now when I say keep changes, what happens? This will be seen like this. And now we can put our own shadow and make it look better. Now because this is a dark background, shadow is not going to be seen. So you can change the shadow a little. Increase the shadow, you can increase the distance of the shadow, it can increase the blur of the shadow and make it look nicer. So this is called remove background. Alright. Any questions? Do you create training material based on PowerPoint for other people to see the presentations? Training material? You are delivering a lecture, but every time the lecture is required, you are not physically available. So you put some notes and put it somewhere and people can read it or look at it later. But then it's not the same as delivering the original lecture or attending the original lecture because the voice part is gone. Notes may not capture everything you are showing. So what do we do? If you have a presentation and you want to make it into a reusable presentation so that others can learn from it later, I'm just going to simplify this presentation by keeping only few slides. So I have three slides. What do you do? When you are running the presentation, you start it from the beginning. Everyone knows that? This is from beginning or F5. Don't do that. Go to this one called Record Slide Show. And then what happens? It starts the presentation. Click on the Record Slide Show button. It says, OK, where do you want to start from? Start recording. It starts from the first slide. Now you deliver the presentation as usual, nothing special. The only extra thing you have to do is take a pause when you are changing from first slide to next. So this is the second slide. This is the third slide. Now if you want to point out to something that can never be captured on notes, you want to show a particular way in a hematoma, something like that, you will do it on a laser pointer. But laser pointer is not going to get recorded. So Microsoft gives you a software laser pointer. Press control key and drag. You see a laser pointer here. You see that? Control key and drag. So that's it. So now next time you run this presentation, see what happens. Now you deliver the presentation as usual. Nothing special. The only extra thing you have to do is take a pause when you are changing from first slide to next. So this is the second slide. This is the third slide. Now if you want to point out to something that can never be captured on notes, you want to show a particular way in a hematoma, something like that, you will do it on a laser pointer. But laser pointer is not going to get recorded. So Microsoft gives you a software laser pointer. Press control key and drag. You see a laser pointer here. You see that? Control key and drag. So that's it. This is available for 18 years. <laughs> the laser pointer is new, that was added in 2010. The record narration part is there for 18 years. But wait, we have a problem. If you want to give it to someone who doesn't have PowerPoint, then maybe this was for uh, patient education. You can't expect them, every patient to have PowerPoint. Then what do you do? What would you like? What format can be run everywhere? JPEG is a picture format. Movie, what kind of format? MP4, very nice. So what do you do? Go to File and say Export 
and say create a video and it doesn't ask you any technical questions it asks you HD semi HD which is 720p or for mobile device so for to save time I will do it for mobile and then you just click on create video now it's doing the processing if it's a long thing it will take longer but you can continue working on PowerPoint it is already finished in this case so I'm going to go and show you that video this is the mp4 file 1 MB size now you deliver the presentation as usual nothing special the only extra thing you have to do is take because I said it is for mobile the size is small if it had said HD it would occupy the full screen and give you better resolution but even in mobile notice it's quite nice and it has also captured the laser pointer with narration with animation with timing everything so from conceptualization to final delivery the entire production system is in front of you it's up to you to exploit it all right so let's go and do something else now enough of PowerPoint let's look at word and we will look at Excel also can we go on till 4 or you want to finish earlier okay so I have a sample here which I'll use in fact I'll show you something called a makeover I do have a presentation but I don't have time to show before after so I will try to show you a makeover where did I put the makeover So I'm going to show you some slides before and after okay this is the original slide all right modified improved slide is this you see the difference this is the original slide this is using smart art but it is using smart art in the wrong way because there are too many options here and this should have got horizontally classified not vertically it's wasting so much space and then this is randomly labeled this is sort of a footnote but it is too big actually this layer each layer has a name this is family genus species but these three words look like they are lying there unnecessarily they don't have a correlation visually with that hierarchy so same slide is shown like this now see the difference this is a simple whatever scanning electron micrograph I suppose now this is already zoomed but if I what is it showing viral release that brown thing which is getting released is the virus now if I want to focus more on it notice what happens this was the original slide this is the made over slide actually this looks smaller and it has a shadow but notice what happens in the next animation understand focuses on the object of interest better this is just something which is being shown and we wanted to show two specific things in that room the lab this is observation window this is video monitor it works purpose is so it is shabby vomit worthy see this better now notice I want to show something here on that tray so it looks like this like this better than before but look at the modified version it shows you the area first and then it shows better so everything can be improved beyond imagination with lesser effort remember normally when we want more quality better results better output we have to put more effort office is the only product if used correctly it will give you better output better outcome with lesser effort it's paradoxical inefficiency if you want to call it that way all right so let's go to word any questions so far so because we are with tables let me finish the tables thing now notice what has happened we got this table inside using auto fit which is nice but this is a column called quantity this will have some quantity here some quantity here this description requires more space how will you give more space whose job is it you don't have to help word word has to do it 
so we know there is an auto fit already so we go to auto fit directly don't waste time and then auto fit to contents so it will do the job but unfortunately this is also not correct not correct means not perfect why not perfect because right now you are very happy now you asked for it you said auto fit wo duniya bhar auto fit karte rahega zindagi bhar you asked for it now you can't crib so now you have to say boss abhi enough chup baitho abhi how do i say that that's why there is a third option fixed column width now it will keep quiet so these options are not randomly put there there is a story behind it learning the story that thought process is called efficiency all right so another one this is a classic one this row is breaking across pages very irritating so what do we do there are nine inefficient methods i will show the most popular one we press enter 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 बराबर है बड़ो एक ही कॉलम का हो गया इसको भी करना पड़ेगा ऐसे सत्रह कॉलम होंगे तो सत्रह बार एंटर दबाएंगे बहुत टाइम है अपने पास <coughs> हो गया अभी दूसरा कुछ एडिट होगा ये स्टब वन चीज वापस ऊपर आएगा तो बोला अरे इसको समझता नहीं और मैं उसको पनिश करता हूँ और एंटर और एंटर दिस इज नॉट हेल्पिंग ऑफिस वी आर फाइटिंग विथ ऑफिस नाउ सो वॉट इज द सिचुएशन we never even thought that we can tell word please don't break this row and it will understand that option exists but then which row should not break right now this row is the offending one tomorrow something changes the third row will break fourth row will break so ideally we should tell that to all the rows that means select the table and then go to table properties table layout table properties now another problem happens when you go to such places too many things there we read 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 are confused 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 and then we say cancel <laughs> our best friend comes into play escape so whenever you go to such complicated places do not read what is written here read on top first kyun aaya idhar at least go to the right place we are talking about rows so go to the rows then read so what you thought was a bug is actually a feature डोंट अलाउ रो टू ब्रेक अक्रॉस पेजेस अभी जिंदगी भर नहीं ब्रेक होगा वो इट विल मैनेज दिस इज नॉट स्प्लिट टेबल दिस इज नॉट कंट्रोल एंटर दिस इज नॉट एंटर एंटर नाउ राइट नाउ इट इज गॉन टू द नेक्स्ट पेज इफ आई डू समथिंग अबाव विच क्रिएट्स इनफ स्पेस ये अपने आप ऊपर भी आएगा यू डोंट हैव टू वरी द इज अनदर प्रॉब्लम दो वॉट इज द प्रॉब्लम राइट नाउ this heading called component and purpose is not going to the next page how do we solve the problem copy paste and first thought is always wrong so what should we do expect word to give you a solution so is it a design problem or a layout problem if you don't know you have to read more buttons that's all eventually you will find the answer this is a layout problem design means color font border दिख रहा है कुछ दिख रहा है क्या हैव यू फॉगॉट एन वाई वी हैव कम हियर यस सो व्हाट इज इट सेइंग? देर इज एन ऑप्शन देयर अ प्रॉब्लम क्या है वो ऑप्शन के साथ ग्रेड आउट है ग्रेड आउट मींस नॉट एक्टिव सो दिस इज अनदर साइकोलॉजिकल प्रॉब्लम जो ग्रेड आउट नहीं है वो भी हम देखते नहीं है तो ग्रेड आउट वाला क्यों देखेंगे इट गिव्स यू अनदर एक्सक्यूज ये तो ग्रेड आउट है मैं क्यों सोचू उसके बारे में सो देयर यू हैव टू थिंक वन एक्स्ट्रा थिंग वेन विल इट नॉट बी ग्रेड आउट इफ इट इज एब्सोल्यूटली यूजलेस इट वुडेंट बी देयर इट इज करंटली यूजलेस सो वॉट इन सम कॉन्टेक्ट इट विल बी यूजफुल वॉट इज दैट कॉन्टेक्ट सो लुक एट द स्क्रीन केयरफुल यूल अंडरस्टैंड वॉट द प्रॉब्लम इज विच रो हैज टू बी मेड हेड अ फर्स्ट रो वेर इज माई कर्सर सेकेंड रो कैसा हेडर बनाएगा दैट इज वॉट इट इज ट्राइंग यू मैं इसको नहीं हेडर बना सकता हूं सो क्लिक हेयर इट बिकम्स एक्टिव देन इट इज डन नाउ यू डोंट हैव टू वरी अबाउट इट नाउ लेट दैट टेबल गोइंग टू ट्वेंटी पेजेस इट इज वर्ड प्रॉब्लम नाउ यस हाउ मच वी हैव स्लॉग कैन बी द जेनेरिक रिस्पॉन्स टू एवरीथिंग आई एम शोइंग 
all right so now we have understood it the right way so now next time you create a table what are you going to do first of course there are some nice formattings here use them because everyone uses black and white table use some color but now we know two problems are going to happen sooner or later so prevention is better so what should we do now while the table is small right now my cursor is already in the first row so what should i do header so i don't care whether it breaks or not if it breaks i am taking care of it now itself fine and while the table is small i am selecting it going to properties and says in future isko break nahi karna hai so this is called prevention so next time onwards ek kuch bhi hone do hai table ko it will behave properly is that better what is it efficient of course compared to what junk we were doing earlier it is 1000 times efficient but think about it again this is for this table tomorrow you'll make another table you'll have to do it twice third table you'll have to do it twice repetition is inefficient correct so i want to do it once that is okay but second time i don't want to do all these settings all over again and third and fourth so what should we do this is where the problem is have you seen insert table before yes thousands of times have you read all the options there before no there is an option there called quick tables जिंदगी में पढ़ा ही नहीं वो क्योंकि अपने सिचुएशन है अपने इन योर एक्सपीरियंस नथिंग हैपेंस क्विकली सो क्विक का कोई मीनिंग ही नहीं है नाउ इफ यू क्लिक देयर मोस्ट ऑफन व्हाट हैपेंस द थिंग कॉल्ड क्विक टेबल इज देयर बट व्हाट डज इट शो सम रैंडम कैलेंडर बोलते हमको कैलेंडर नहीं चाहिए एस्केप दबा के निकल जाओ देर इज अ नाइस ऑप्शन एट द बॉटम कॉल्ड सेव सिलेक्शन टू क्विक टेबल गैलरी ये इनएक्टिव है अभी बिकॉज हम टेबल के अंदर है ही नहीं so now we have created a table we have configured it correctly select that table first then go to table then go to quick tables and then the last option is on so now i say this is my standard table whatever name you want to give it now what happens anywhere in word now wherever you want a new table you don't insert a regular table you go to quick tables forget those things at the bottom my standard table appears in one click you get the table with all the settings you want that is called efficiency now think of situations where you open a new document you know there is a similar table i have created one month back two months back then you figure out where the document is open that document copy paste into the new one remove the unwanted part that is the time you have to save it as a quick table so you can create as many templates as required for reusable tables this is a blank one you can create more templates also and then share it across the department so that is about tables but the bigger problem in word is different what is word about it is all about content what you type there or what you copy paste there so content and then we have to do formatting what takes more time actually this is word's job we shouldn't be doing it at all we should be spending zero time in formatting so how do you do that very simple when we start making a document i'll take an existing one i have got one sample here so let's say this is an article he is writing this is a topic main topic correct now i'm going to save this and keep the original copy let's call it version 2 so now notice all this formatting here double spacing this bold this thing colon and then introduction all this is manual formatting do you understand so the bigger the article the more extra formatting you will have to do for main topic sub topic sub sub topic actually it is words job so if you want main topic to be identified as main topic don't do formatting just click there and say this is my main topic it's called heading 1 it will look like this never mind the magazine or wherever you are submitting it may have asked for bold and black and whatever we will repair that later but right now formatting happened automatically so whenever you want a main heading keep it like this now let's say keywords was also a main heading so i will apply now keywords the topic is main heading so i will apply heading 1 to this guy and then introduction again i will apply heading 1 so notice 
as I am typing my document, I know which is a main heading, I know which is a subheading, so I am just applying the correct level of heading. So let's go further. Now this is case report. This is also main heading. And just for argument's sake, let's say I have something else under the case report. Let's say I want to say history. This is a subtopic. So what should I do? I go there and apply heading 2. Now if you open this, there is only heading 2. Complex documents can require multiple levels, correct? So 2 is absolutely grossly inadequate, but at least let's apply 2. Now notice what happens. This gets a different kind of formatting. Just to show you what happens with heading 1. Heading 1 looks like this, heading 2 looks like this. They are visually different. You don't have to worry about it. It's doing it on its own. Now, suppose under history, I have a subheading. I need heading 3. And there doesn't seem to be a heading 3. But notice, heading 3 is also there. Earlier it was not shown, now it is shown. So actually, if you use the heading, then it will expose the next heading level. Nine levels of headings are there, which are most adequate for any kind of complex thesis or book or whatever. Most complex documents are made by legal people. They also are happy with it. So nine levels are more than enough. Why did it not show nine levels up front? Impressed the people nine levels. Why did it not show one level and who is going to be impressed with that is the issue. There is a space constraint. So some decisions have to be taken like this. But wait. Now just to make it more complicated, I am going to put some junk text there to make it bigger. Right now it's just a six page document. I am going to make it bigger. So discussion is also heading one. And I don't know what else is there. References. Okay. So now we have a big document this document I'm just randomly creating a big document we have a 24 page document now now we want to navigate in the document as it becomes bigger and bigger navigation from one place to another becomes bigger and uh, more and more cumbersome so now I want to go to the place where I have written history I know it is there in one of those 24 pages how will I reach there find correct so what is our rule first thought which comes to mind is inefficient so don't do that what are we doing navigating across the document for navigation what do you use if you go to a new city which you don't know anything about on a holiday what do you use a map so exactly the same way if you go to view tab there is a navigation pane in older version it was called document map now when you open this notice what happens it shows you your structure of the document in the left side this window never gets printed. This is not the real table of contents. This is a live table of contents. You may see some gaps like this here. Why? There is nothing here. Why? Because by mistake I had applied heading 1 but I didn't write anything there. So it's blank. So what do you say? This is by mistake. So I say apply normal style. Only heading 1, 2, 3 appear here. So that gap is gone. So if you see unwanted gaps, go there and remove that apply normal style. So now if I am in abstract and I want to go to history, I just click on history. I don't care how far it is. Because even if you had used find, the word history would have appeared 20 times. You don't know find next, find next, find next, 20th may aega, 29th may aega, 200th time aega. Correct? So this is better. Now, suppose for whatever reason, I had written here by mistake examination findings also because I knew the findings history someone else was going to give me so I wrote history later both of them have 15 pages written under it now I want to change the order what would you normally do you would go to examination and then press shift and page down shift and page down shift and page down till till you reach the end point or lunch time whichever is earlier now what should we do Even if you don't know the solution, what would you love to have? I want history before examination. Drag and drop. So that works. It does not matter how many pages were under history or examination. It just does the job on its own. And it's very smart. If I take the case report, it's not going to orphan those two guys. It will carry them with it. 
and sometimes we want numbers also that also i'll show you but another common issue is we create a document first and we show it to people they say this is nice let's present it to a larger audience and get some budget for this project so very often we have a requirement where it starts as a document but needs to be a presentation so now if this is supposed to be converted to a presentation what would i do naya presentation nahi jayega blank idhar se copy paste alt tab copy paste scroll 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 then copy paste so what should i do both these products were made by the same company shouldn't they talk to each other and do this job themselves so tell me the answer you create the headings correctly and then click on a small little button here and see what happens this document is wrongly formatted but notice what it did it's already made the presentation one click from document to presentation but prerequisite is you have to use headings correctly if you use headings wrongly then this will happen by mistake heading style got applied to the text so so much text has come so you have to be careful about what is happening so what is this button which i clicked on this is called send to powerpoint now when you go back i'm sure you are going to look for the button and you are not going to find the button at all because by default what buttons are kept there there are only three buttons there what are those save undo and redo all of you have seen them before but that thing called send to powerpoint is not there why is it not there do you remember the older version of office which you have been using for many many years now older version 2003 97 whatever it might be i'll just try to show you that just to refresh your memory this is how the old version look like now probably nobody is using it but i'm sure you remember so if you had to save a file where do you go file and save if you had to mail the file in older version where do you go older version file send to very nice have you gone there before you must have because that was the only way to send mails but have you read all the options there no so this feature that button waited there waited there for 18 years <laughs> even if we don't know which buttons we are clicking on microsoft has a method of finding out how many buttons are being clicked by whom whom in the sense how many people not no names or no privacy is lost but they have a data warehouse which shows which buttons have never been clicked on so obviously this is a good candidate for it so they रियलाइज ये किसी ने बट क्लिक ही नहीं किया तो क्यों रखने का तो निकाल दिया अभी नया वर्जन में रिमूव दिस बटन सो ग्रेट फीचर डाइड इट्स ओन डेथ डिस यूज ए ट्रॉफी यू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज दैट कॉल्ड डिस यूज ए ट्रॉफी सो डज दैट मीन यूर टू गो टू ओल्ड वर्जन टू यूज दिस बटन नो दे रिमूव इट फ्रॉम द मेन्यू दे डेंट रिमूव इट फ्रॉम द प्रोडक्ट so you right click on the menu and say customize this this long weird looking name is these three places why did microsoft put three guys here to inform the world that you can also put your fourth guy but nobody understood it so we can go to customize on the right side it shows the buttons which you already see there on the left side it shows buttons you could put there unfortunately by default it shows popular buttons do you think this button is popular how can it become popular usse ko malum hai nahi hai so don't search here first open this and then where should you go commands not in the ribbon has no meaning because we don't know what is in the ribbon so all commands is safer so go there just type s we want to find a button called send to powerpoint but do not type s e n d it understands only the first character and then press page down page down page down till you find send to powerpoint and then add it there that's how you get the button and then you will see it okay one last thing about these heading styles many times we want numbers we want abstract to be one q 
keywords to be two, case report to be three, history to be 3.1, 3.2, how do you do that? Again manually and sooner or later someone will add some heading in between and then again you manually redo the whole thing. So this is another example of inattentional blindness. Everyone clicked here, everyone clicked here, nobody thought of this guy. Even if you went there, उधर ऐसा कुछ गंदा हेडिंग वन हेडिंग टू दिखा पहले हमको हेडिंग क्या है मालूम नहीं था बोला है मेरे लिए नहीं है एस्केप दबा के निकल जाओ सो नाउ वी नो व्हाट इज हेडिंग सो जस्ट क्लिक ऑन दैट मेक श्योर योर कर्सर इज इन वन ऑफ द हेडिंग्स एंड देन क्लिक ऑन दिस गाय वन क्लिक गिव्स यू नंबरिंग एंड दिस इज डायनामिक नंबरिंग इफ आई चेंज समथिंग एवरीथिंग गेट्स री एडजस्टेड एंड ऑफ स्टोरी सो दैट्स वाई एवरीथिंग यू डू शुड यूज स्टाइल्स नाउ कमिंग टू द लास्ट थिंग most of the publications will ask you a specific thing in the sense headings must be bold and black and times new roman and 16 font size whatever it is but this doesn't look like that so what do we do now that we have said heading 1 we can change the way heading 1 looks so go there and then change whatever that weird magazine is asking for times new roman 16 black done so what happens now wherever the heading is applied automatically it will change and if you are going to send multiple papers to the same publication you are not going to redo this every now and then so what should you do customize those styles make the document blank and save it as a template so next time when you want to publish paper in that particular magazine you use that template so again you are reusing one effort put should be reused lifelong that's the whole idea now another common issue is whatever we type that also comes like this regular text i mean most of them want 1.5 spacing and times new roman and 11 font size this happens to be cambria 11 and single spacing what do you do now this is called normal style so just change the normal style in this case what do we want times new roman okay some people want 10 okay 10 now on for this is the what is this called paragraph spacing we are not talking paragraph spacing here we are talking about line spacing which is here but just to show you every possible formatting is available here what is this everything so what do we want in this case line spacing so that comes under paragraph here you say 1.5 lines and that's it so start this at the beginning so that you don't have to do any formatting at the end all right now one thing about pictures so let's look at a picture we had this picture correct so let's suppose i want to put this picture in my document make some thicker so when i insert a picture what happens sometimes it is too big and then of course i can resize it and now what happens depending on how the default setting is and unfortunately the default setting is like this what happens is it behaves like large font so if i type something this moves which is very frustrating correct so what do we do now you click on the picture then you'll see picture tools on picture tools you'll see wrap text in that you choose the second one called square and the text automatically goes around it and adjusts itself this live adjustment is available only in 2013 in older version when you drag and drop only after dropping you will see the result in 2013 this is shown live so less trial and error now just to show you what's happening here i'm zooming out i'm going to put this picture here somewhere the first page notice and i'm changing the entire document is changing life otherwise normally when we do this we only keep this page and then suddenly baad mein samajhta hai seventh page mein ek hi line aa gaya niche kuch empty hai so if you want you can do this looking at the whole document and it will actually change life do you also notice it is showing you a green line sometimes because you want to center the picture who is going to find the exact center so when you reach the center it gives you a guideline just leave it there is that nice yeah. now just to show you one variation of it if you notice there is wrap text 
there is square and there is tight. See the visual difference between square and tight. ज़्यादा कुछ फर्क नहीं पड़ रहा है. Correct? Same thing. So why is there a tight option? ऐसे एक टाइम नहीं था किसी को एक्स्ट्रा टाइम था एक बटन डाल दिया सो नाउ नॉर्मल कोर्स वी वुड नॉट हैव नोटिस द टाइट ऑप्शन नाउ एटलीस्ट वी आर नोटिसिंग बट इवन आफ्टर नोटिसिंग इट डजन मेक सेंस दैट इज अ प्लेस वेर यू हैव टू गिव अप और एक्सप्लोर यू हैव टू चूज आई एम नॉट सेइंग यू एक्सप्लोर एवरीथिंग बट एटलीस्ट कीप इट इन माइंड की अनएक्सप्लोर्ड है नेक्स्ट टाइम कुछ एक्स्ट्रा टाइम मिला तो ढूंढ लेंगे बट जस्ट टू शो यू द एंसर टू दिस एवरी बटन यू सी हैज अ पर्पज discovering the purpose is called efficiency and at least wanting to discover the purpose so to show you the example where was the purple one we did where did i show you the same slide without okay i'll take another one i'll remove the background i told you how to do that earlier you know this already i am not removing the shadow right now just keep it like this so now i am going to copy this picture and paste it here of course it's too big so i'll make it smaller so now we have this picture and this picture this picture is still not wrapped so what should i do now square just to show you the difference it's behaving the same way but now if i say tight see what happens what happens because the rest of the area is transparent the text flows around the exact boundary of the picture that is why tight was created in this picture tight has no meaning because the size of the picture or the dimensions of visible pixels is square so tight and square has no meaning but here it has a tremendous impact on what you are doing this versus this okay where is our document gone now one last thing you need table of contents because we have already used these heading styles all that you have to do is go to the beginning make sure this doesn't have a heading and then you go to references and say table of contents and click that's it it will create the table of contents for you automatically and this is a dynamic table of contents right now abstract is starting right here so this is first page now i'm forcibly putting it on second page the table of content doesn't dynamically change because the process will be too slow so you have to right click there or just click somewhere there in the gray area and then say update table now whenever we see such dialogues our natural reaction is to press escape without reading it so now start reading what is written there why is it asking you that question a small document it doesn't make a difference but if it's a 500 page complex document and you know you are not added any main topics or sub topics updating page numbers is faster than updating the entire table if in doubt choose the second so then it will do the needful so it's a live table of contents now one problem sometimes this table of contents when you go there it becomes gray correct if you click there it has a gray kind of thing how do you disable that you go to file options go to advanced these are called fields actually they are like formulas so under options there are lots of options there is one option called field shading by default it is when selected you say never the gray will never be seen and say any other questions on word otherwise i'm going to go to excel yes sir very nice the bibliography you are talking about right yeah so for those who do academics this is a very important thing so assume you have not done this before so you have written something and you want some bibliography references to be added most of this we do manually and each publication has a different method some is uh, iso someone is what is it called harvard right different methods so you don't have to worry about all that you go to references this is the first time you are doing it so you go to manage sources so whatever references you are looking at first you have to add them here so i have put 3 now in you can make a list like this i can add a new one so let's say a new article
Okay, now notice this is very comprehensive. It gives you different kinds of sources. This is there is a scroll bar. One of the best practices for becoming efficient is when you see a scroll bar, you must scroll it because you have no idea how comprehensive this is. It even has film, interview, patents. So depending on what you choose, the fields change. And these are international standards, so it's exactly aware of what it is doing. So like this I am adding sources. You have on the left side it shows you all the sources you have added. Now you may want to use a particular source in this particular document. You can either copy it or there is a better way. Assuming you have made a list of sources and here I want to put a reference for this particular sentence. Then you say insert citation. It will show you only things on the right side of that manage sources. So first you have to add. So right now I am adding all these to manage sources. So all four of them now will be available to me in this document. So when I go here, notice if I say sorry, insert citation, it will show me all of them. So now when I click here, it will add the reference. What format it will add the reference depends on the style. So in your case, which one do you use most commonly nowadays? Sorry? No, one person say. Sorry? Vancouver. Vancouver to dikne raha Howard, I think, is the same as. But notice, if I change the style, it will automatically manage. You don't have to worry about formatting. Notice, this is the ISO style. I didn't do anything. So, let's keep it with Howard. And then I'm going to put references by saying insert citation. And at the end of it, you want bibliography. So what do you do? You just go to the bottom, wherever the document ends, and then say insert bibliography. Sometimes with the title is bibliography, sometimes you want to call it references. That's the only difference. Now it will add the references. And when you change the style, the reference style will automatically change. Nothing is new here. This is there for again 18 years. The number of styles have increased. The simplicity has increased, but this is how you create a database. Now, if you move from one machine to another new machine, you will not see any source. So what do you do? You have one laptop. You change the laptop and you want to write articles there. Your sources are on this machine. What do you do? Create a dummy document, go to manage sources, copy all of them and then that document you put it on the other machine then it will carry everything with it and then you can use it on the other side that's how you manage bibliography same way there are footnotes and references and cross reference all right so how much time do we have 10 minutes so let me show you something in excel from an analysis point of view how many of you know this feature called pivot table Pivot table. No? Only one? Two. Okay. So first thing, when you get data, make sure it is tabular. I don't have time to show you all the things which you should look for in the data, but from an analysis point of view, there are some simple rules we have to check for the raw data. If the raw data is in bad format, it makes your life miserable. If it is in good format, you can analyze it instantly. So how do you capture it in good format? There are some very simple rules. So data should be like a table. There can be any number of columns, any number of rows, but every column should follow this simple guideline. There should be a title on top and consistent data below. Very simple. That's the best type of data. So this is good data. Date and all our dates. Region, all our date. Like that. But this can very easily get spoiled. Understand? This is a data type mismatch. Here in one column we are putting two meanings. One column should have one meaning. 
here this data is of a wrong type this is not going to be taken into account while calculating why because it's left aligned left aligned means it is being considered as text in fact that green mark there which most of us no don't notice is an error indicator click there and then it will tell you what is the error and help you correct it also so very simple rules read them so you have to check whenever you get data this is to be like this if you are creating the format yourself it has to be like this now if you get data and one of these checklist item is violated that is called bad data don't continue working on it if it is not follow, following this format because if you continue your life is going to become exponentially more complicated and then you will end up helping excel so now if you get bad data what should you do bad means these rules are not followed that's called bad data what should you do make it good and then analyze it what is our rule whatever thought comes is wrong you got the data means someone gave it to you correct ask that person to give it in good format why are you wasting your time unless you have captured the data yourself then nobody can help you you have to repair it but if it is coming from somewhere else that somewhere else may be capable of giving you data in good format we never asked that's why they never gave so typically if it's coming from hospital management systems it is coming already from a database so behind the scenes it is already tabular because you asked for a report it made a report and gave it to you report was designed to be the end point but now that report has become an input for you to do something else that is when the format is interfering with you so ask it or whoever is the source give me in tabular format most probably you will get it from an it point of view giving data in tabular format is 1000 times simpler than making a report so just ask for it if they don't give you then you repair it okay now having got data in good format how to analyze it let's look at that so i have some things here what do i have serial number date age gender procedure findings remarks now this goes on and on and on i think it's ending here now notice the problems what are the problems whenever you see left aligned things means what text now for those who don't know excel seems to understand date number text and there is one more true or false called logical but actually it understands only number and text so this is a number this is a text this is a date sorry correct but if i remove the formatting if i say clear format so i go to format cells and say remove the formatting removing formatting means general general means no formatting then notice what happens it just becomes a number so excel stores dates as numbers because you have applied date formatting it is showing to you as dates so now notice if there is text it is left aligned if it is number it is right aligned now what is this is it left aligned or right aligned how do you know it's just snugly fitting so you don't know so whenever there is a date column never fit it snugly make it bigger only then you will see the alignment so if you expect dates and it is right aligned that's correct if you expect dates and they are left aligned that means they are bad dates they are not understood by excel as dates they are understood by excel as text right now so how do you convert them to numbers now this one is understood for whatever reason notice this this is called bad data this is even worse why because there is dot there so how do you convert all these so there are many ways of doing it i will tell you the best method first thing is whenever you have a block of data where it begins and where it ends you come to know by scrolling correct notice there are some empty rows here what are they doing i don't know what are these empty rows so don't keep empty rows empty columns this much at least you have to clean 
now assuming this is there right now it is ending here you may do some analysis assuming it is ending at 90 all formulas will be from 1 to 90 and tomorrow if you copy paste next month's data all your formulas are outdated then you have to remember where the formulas are and you have to update them that is not your job so what do you do whenever you get data make sure it is tabular and then select it from beginning to end manually if required I am selecting it like this notice first row to the last row last column make sure the selection is correct and then say insert table what does that do make sure there are headers it puts this blue kind of color which normally you get in word or powerpoint tables but it's not only aesthetic benefit now excel also knows where the data begins and where it ends understand so to give you an example of what happens now i'm going to add one extra row here and now I'm just going to count how many procedures were done. Actually count will count number of rows where there is something written in there. So let's say I want average age. So what will I do? Average and then I will go and change all the way to the bottom. Now notice this is a problem because whatever selection I do will stop at the blank. Then I have to do again down, again page down. Understand the problem? Painful thing. So what should we do now? You say, whenever a table is created, every column should have a name. That's a mandatory thing. If you try to delete a name, it will forcibly put some name. If you put same name again, it will automatically make them unique. So it enforces some baseline discipline. So every column must have a unique name, no merge cells. And table gets table tools. And table can also be given a name. So I'm going to call it survey. Okay. Now, what do I want? I want average of age from the table called survey. Correct? Right now I'm doing it here, but maybe I would have done it on another she summary sheet also. Now notice what happens. I'm going to go and select this data manually. Average and right now I'm selecting it manually. Notice what it is saying, like normal C1, C8. Now I'm going to go all the way at the bottom and select the whole column. Now what should it show? Whatever, C7 colon C90, something like that, correct? Because that much has been selected. But notice what it is saying now, if I go on top. Why are you bothered about rows and columns? Naam diya na usko. So now, if because we have given names, this is how you write formulas. Survey. What was the name of the table? Survey. So if you type S, it will show you all functions with S. But it will also show you tables with S. So notice the icon is different. So you either select it like this and press tab, then it will fill it. But now I want to see the columns. There may be 100 columns in complex the data captures there may be hundreds of columns long questionnaires the titles you are not going to remember so when you open a square bracket it gives you a list of columns here are you getting the concept I press tab and I do the job now this worked here wait I am going to go to a new sheet now and I want average age what will I do exactly the same thing average survey square bracket age so make tables for raw data life becomes very simple remember that now this is not the only benefit next month I'm going to get more survey results so just to show you that I'm just copy pasting five more rows from here whatever number of rows I'm just pasting it at the bottom notice I'm outside the table understand when I paste it, look at what happened. The table extended itself. Just to show you what has changed, remember the average right now. What was it? 32.759. Remember that. Now I'm going to change that average by copying something and adding those extra things outside the table. But now it has been incorporated. What happened? Average changed here and average changed on the other sheet. Where was that other sheet? Where did I put it? Sheet 4. Understand? 
this is excel helping you so whenever there is tabular data make a table and then do everything else this is simple manually put calculation but normally what would we want we would want age distribution we would want gender distribution we would want by procedure how many people came within that procedure what was the average age those kind of questions we want to answer how do we do that suppose i want to say by diagnosis how many people came what would you do sort it subtotal it manually do count everything is outdated not required first make a table then ask excel to give you a report that report is called pivot table so click on pivot table notice because we have given a name to the table it automatically picked up the name and then click okay so what happens excel will add a new sheet here with a empty report what is it saying to build a report choose fields from pivot table now uh, it will show you this thing on the right side what does it show you all the columns from your data nothing great but this list is here and your pivot table is here so like a tennis match you have to keep looking here there so better go here drag this guy move 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 keep on moving and then it will stick on the left side then it is juxtaposed it's much more convenient now the report is blank obviously excel doesn't know what you want to analyze so let's do a simple thing i want to see male and female how many so gender or sex i put it in rows so what does it do it goes through your data finds out unique items from your column and puts them there there were some blanks also then i want to count it so again drag drop gender and put values values means calculations happen here because it's text it is going to count it this is your gender distribution of course count function doesn't count blanks so blanks count you will not get if you want to get the count for blanks you have to choose a field which guarantees that there is a item in it now when you get data you may not know which field that is so it's better to put one extra column there called counter and just put one character in it because you know that one has data in it so i'm just going to go back and i'm going to add a new column actually serial number should have worked but in this case serial number doesn't have so i'm going to just put a counter column and i'm going to put a simple formula here what character i put doesn't matter now this is a formula and this is a table table has another special benefit whenever you type a formula it automatically copies it you don't have to drag double click copy paste nothing that's why i put a formula otherwise i would have to type a and drag it so now that we have a counter column we can come here refresh this and now for counter any counter i am going to use that column so let me refresh this guy's source so counter will always give you the blanks count also now what are we seeing by gender now i want to see it by diagnosis so i drag and drop diagnosis i see how many of each bottom line is you just drag and drop so i same plants i don't know what the data is now let's put findings there are no unique things here let me open some data which is useful and then we will do it so i have some fictitious data here what do i have i have date location what was the diagnosis gender age marital status simple data now i want to analyze it so pivot table already know so now i will say location wise or diagnosis wise analysis diagnosis and count easy now i want to see within that gender so notice what i am doing i am dragging gender and dropping it below diagnosis so in each of them it will give you male female breakup if i want to put diagnosis on rows and gender on columns i will put it in columns then it looks like this so whatever you are doing by spending hours of your precious time is just a drag drop you just have to learn pivot table properly it has many great features i don't have time to show all of them but let me show you one 
many times we want everything shown as percentage this should be 100 and this should be the contribution by diagnosis what do i do you don't put formulas i am assuming excel can do it for me but i don't know exactly where the option is what should i do i already told you right click and look at all options and then think which option will make sense i want to show it as percentage very nice show values as now that arrow means what there are more options click karega to darne ka nahi bahut options aayega now read from top to bottom till you find the answer so we have only one column right now so grand total will also work column total will also work but sooner or later you are going to add something in column so column is safer so done now you want to see actual also again i'll drag drop so this will show actual and percentage is it good now if this was a long list for example instead of diagnosis if i put month what happens now do i have month okay i'll put month hold on <coughs> how do you put month don't put a month function you want month to be shown as jan feb march correct so the correct way of doing it is i want it as text based on this date and what format do i want to apply mmm mmm gives you months that's how you get months so now i'll just refresh this i'll get month now when i put month column 1 is month notice i didn't have to tell him to recalculate it did it on its own now the problem is when i have so many numbers it's better to see it as percentage very nice but still everything is 7 8 10 visually i have to read 12 numbers to understand who is higher who is lower so there is another way of making it simpler to look we select all the numbers and say conditional formatting and put a data bar so notice what happens now it puts a bar chart inside so visually it is better you don't have to read the numbers you look at the bar and then you will understand better nice okay now this can go on and on but bottom line you have four areas to play with what to go in rows what to put in columns what to calculate and what to filter by so if i want to see filter i have put month in filter and diagnosis in rows so what is it showing me now this is the overall picture across the year if i only want to see a particular month i will say feb then it will filter it on feb if i want multiple months i want to say jan feb and march it will filter it on that and everything which is being drawn here can be converted to a chart so click on the pivot table go to analysis and choose the chart type so in this case i'll do a pie chart so what will happen this is linked to each other now so notice what i'm doing whenever i change something here that chart is going to change so i'm going to remove all the filters now notice the chart change so these two are linked to each other now if i remove diagnosis from here and put month there this will have 12 things so it's live you don't have to do anything manually to change the chart this is the old method of analysis i'm going to show you the latest method of analyzing data and then finish now sometimes what happens each pivot table is giving you one point of view one is giving you monthly breakup another is giving you diagnosis another is giving you location for you to get the overall picture you may want to see multiple types of analysis at a glance which you can do here by removing this and putting something else agreed but i want to see all of them together and then interact with them that becomes a little cumbersome you have to get multiple pivot tables multiple charts rearrange them manually taklif hota hai so learn pivot table but equally important learn this new thing this is 2013 called power view what does it do it adds a new sheet let's see what it does adds a new sheet this is not an excel sheet as you can see this is just a blank area and what is it giving me on this side it's giving me my table with all the same columns here 
So before I was dragging and dropping, now also I am going to do the same drag drop. Let's make it a little colorful. This has different themes for colors. Let's make this one. So now same thing I'll do. I'll say diagnosis, drag and drop. So it shows me all the diagnosis available. And I will say count again. And this one I want to summarize. So I say count. Notice count non-blank or count distinct. So I'll say count non-blank. So I got the same kind of report. Now this itself I want to convert it to a chart. So I say convert this to a pie chart. So it became a pie chart. So I arranged the pie chart here. Nice. Then I want to see the same thing by gender. So I say gender and uh, again gender and I'll say count. So what is happening here? Only two items, so this also will make pie chart. I can change the chart type if I like. If I wanted this to be a bar chart, I could have done that also. So you choose. Then I want month. So I'm going to put month. Where is month? That is column one. And uh, diagnosis, and we will say count. So what am I doing? Everywhere I'm putting the count as the basis and creating different kind of charts. If I want, I don't like these colors, at any point I can go and change the colors also. <coughs> well, let's make it more colorful. Now we'll put one more for location. Location and diagnosis and count. So notice, very quickly, I have done four types of analysis side by side. Nice? Now let's say I want to do further drill down. I am interested in endometriosis. I can see what is the proportion of endometriosis across different cases. That's easy. But within males and females, of course endometriosis doesn't happen there, but this is an example. <laughs> or within each month, what was the contribution of endometriosis? I want to see that. And within each location, what was it happening? Then I just click on endometriosis and see what happens. I didn't do anything to correlate them. I just drew independent charts and they are automatically correlated to each other. So with less effort, you will feel like spending the time which you have saved by doing all the inefficient things efficiently. Now you can invest it in analysis so that you understand what is happening better and when you know more, you will act better. That's how you are going to grow. So everything which I have plotted here is a filter. So if I want to see July mein kya hua, this was the proportion of different things. What happened in Bandup, Bandra, this is the proportion of Bandra. I want to see Bandra, Vaikhala, Chembur, this is how it is. Nice? Now another way of showing the same thing. Sometimes we want to start with only one thing, so let's do that. It's only one thing, the disease. And because there's only one thing, we'll make it as a column chart. I want to understand the disease, and after the disease, I want to look at the, what should I do? Month, column one month, month in this case. And then I want to go by marital status, and then I want to go by location. Now notice I dragged and dropped many things here, but it is still showing me the diagnosis, the top one. So what is the point in dragging these guys? It has no impact on my chart. Because this is interactive, I have told this guy that I will first look at disease, which is fine. Then I want to investigate CA uterus. When I double click there, it will say next kya dikhana hai, month dikhana hai. So now when I double click on any of these, it will break it down by month. So now I am saying endometriosis broken down by months. Now when I say December, this is endometriosis, December broken down by married, unmarried. So endometriosis, December, married, usme location. This is called drill down, drill up. So this is drill down, there is an up button, then it will go in the reverse direction. Now maybe I didn't want to draw this as a bar chart, I wanted it as a pie chart, very nice. This is the distribution shown for the entire year. Now I want to show this by month. What can I do? 
pie chart cannot show two series correct so notice what i'm doing now i take the month column and i put it as tile by so notice what happened here it's showing me april august june then it is changing the pie chart but problem is what is the problem i can only see one month at a time i'll have to remember what happened in august before i click on next one so maybe you like this maybe you don't like this so another way of doing it. the same guy column 1 means month i am putting in a very special area called vertical multiples and then see what happened that is what i wrote yesterday how to create 12 pie charts in one second just drag it into vertical multiples or i wanted to see it by something else i wanted to see it by married unmarried because there are only two items married or unmarried there will be only two pie charts if i say by location there are so many locations there is no place to show so it will show those but show me a scroll bar there is a completely new way of understanding data data has not changed but what you are gaining out of it insights useful information more useful information coming with lesser effort so i'm not saying don't use pivot table both have their strengths and weaknesses use both for all kinds of data and the last thing i'll show you then we'll finish i'm just going to keep location now this doesn't make any sense so i'll make it columnar so what is it showing me alphabetical this is not very nice so what do i want it by count and in descending order that will give me incidence to matunga me whatever that disease is more this is good but let's see if we can improve it now if it understands it it will actually plot those guys and show you the locations this is excel now if it doesn't understand the something it will not be plotted correctly so gatkopar has gone in the sea but never mind <laughs> so how do you solve that problem when you have data when you go to the locations you should put locations wherever the data is what should you do you will say dadar comma mumbai matunga comma mumbai you identified with the next level of hierarchy in geography then it will understand but anyway you get the idea kya ho raha hai there i am actually seeing geographical distribution so if there is a incidence of something here and something next door i will understand it better no amount of bar or pie chart is going to show me that not only that while i have this guy open i can have other guys also for example i want to see marital status and the other thing which we saw simple breakup and this as a pie chart and now if i click here these guys will get filtered or if i click on a particular location this will also get filtered by that now notice what it is showing me it is showing me the overall picture and showing me the contribution of married unmarried for that location if i press control click i can include multiple locations also good useful all right so last thing i will show you and then finish this is a 2d chart i want to show you a 3d chart and then we will finish so 3d chart i am just going to show you with population data these are different wards locations density population how many people stay and so on so there is another tool which you can download called power map this is a free tool download and install now what does this guy do this guy adds a globe this requires a 3d chart it gives you a globe like this 3d globe you can zoom in zoom out do whatever you want put labels there and then i have location as a option here so let me refresh the data okay so i have location which i am going to plot so notice it has plotted the areas but it has not still shown what is to be done so now i am going to put on top of it the kidhar gaya population population notice what happens now 
this has drawn a 3D chart now, but we are looking at it from the top, so obviously it doesn't make sense. So you can rotate it, you can turn it around, you can zoom in, zoom out. And then along with location, I want to see, uh, uh, what would I say, how many houses are there. So now it is showing you as a stack bar, which doesn't make sense because they are unrelated items. So I can see as a, and if you wanted to present this data in PowerPoint kind of thing, so maybe I want to start with South Bombay. And the next one I want to go to Central Bombay. The next scene I want to go to this area. Maybe I want to change the elevation a little, rotate it around. And the fourth scene I want to show as the overall picture of Bombay. So I created four scenes. And then for each scene I can have different uh, animations and special effects and all that. Which I'm not going to show you details, but just to quickly tell you what it does. So I'm going to give different transition effects here. And then, this is like a presentation I created, four slides showing four geographical aspects of it, and then I say play. So what happens, it goes full screen, and those scenes it will show, you have control over how long it stays, how long it rotates, how does it transition, it will smoothly fly to the next location, show it to you. Of course, if you want to share it with someone who doesn't have Excel, correct version, then you say create video, it will create an MP4 file. That is how I showed how many people I have taught across continents. That is how that video was created. Okay, so to finish, summary slides and then we finish. Just give me a minute. So, we are using office like this lady. This one had a legacy typewriter, very good at it, but now she has a word processor, but her mindset has not changed. <laughs> that is how we are using office. We learnt it in college days, learned 50 features, and we are thinking that is our comfort zone, but that is the most uncomfortable zone you are in. So the logic is, what you have been ignoring is thousand times more powerful than what you have been aware of. So it's in your interest to explore. I have shown you how easy it is to explore. When you explore, you learn. When you learn, you are smart enough to apply it. And now you know so much, when you go back to the department, you are going to see thousands of inefficient people around it. What are you going to do? First, laugh at them. Have your laugh. Whether you laugh aloud or in your mind depends on who is reporting to whom, but have a laugh. But after that, even if you don't like that person, at least out of pity, you will feel like teaching it to them, correct? So please share it with them, but don't give it for free. You have 12,000 features to learn, so divide the work in your department. Say so you learn animation, you learn transition, you learn power view, and then teach each other. And that's when everyone will grow faster. So whoever you are, office is the catalyst to your growth. So these are some references for you to look at. This is my blog. There are 30 minute videos available here. This is my Twitter handle. And before I finish, I'm going to do something on behalf of all those buttons which you have been ignoring. So if these buttons are helpless, correct? They look at what junk you are doing every day, but they can't tell you, Madam, please click on me. I am there to help you. They have no voice of their own. Am I right? So if they had a voice, wouldn't they be first of founder for normally create associations for things which are being wrong exploited? This is under your association. Koi click nahi kar hai mere upar. So if these buttons have this thing. By the way, those customers who wrote are most of them in psychiatric wards now because they are depressed. Itna mehnat kiya notice appreciation to dur ki baat hai. So which song would these be sing? I know.
हमसे आया गया हमसे interest you will definitely benefit from it and then soon you will start exploring more and more and more monthly life long you are going to become more efficient so to rest what kind of them aap hi agar humse milte hain dekhiye ek din pyar ho jayega thank you Yes, the microphone. Yes.